student in class today, let's arrange our space. Thank you all too for joining me. I'm Emily. This is our St. Patrick's Day Celtic uh, yoga mythology infusion. Many of you have come to my yoga mythology classes before or my drinking yoga classes before. Today, I've challenged myself to integrate Celtic mythology into it. We'll see how it goes. <laughs> it's going to be fun no matter what. So let's arrange our space. Um, I have my Irish death in honor of Shavasana, of course, beer. I don't even know who it's by. Someone called Quilters, purchased from QFC. So if we want to go ahead and pop open whatever we're choosing to drink today, make sure that if you're pouring the beer into the glass, you tilt the beer so that it does not get foamy. That is a very important, our first, our first very important lesson for today. And I also, in case you didn't notice, am using a solo cup as a plastic cup because it is likely that you might spill today. We're gonna to be doing very exciting things with our glass. The benefit is I'm moving, so if I stain my carpet, I don't mind. But for you, you might wanna be a little bit careful. I also have here a green box and it has sage in it. That's my little shrine of today. I thought it was a good play on the idea that today's class is themed to sages who are yoga seers, healers, poets, um, the yogis who are able to stay outside of social paradigms, the magic makers and yoga and druids who play the exact same role in Celtic mythology. So I'll close that there. The last thing that I need to say, which I usually say before my yoga mythology or drinking yoga classes, is that yoga is a rich tradition, much older than even we know. And these classes are aimed to give a taste of the yoga myths and traditions and folklores, folklore, but they are not um, true to yoga tradition. Um, Drinking and yoga have never been claimed to have happened in the past. And so just know culturally, I'm not from Indian culture. Um, I am from Celtic culture, but even that I don't uh, know as well as my ancestors did. So if you want to learn more about Celtic traditions, if you want to learn more about yoga traditions, they are so rich. I'm touching the tip of the iceberg and in a culturally silly way almost a satirical way. So after class today, if you want more information for how you can dive into these ideas more culturally sensitively, <laughs> please let me know. As always, most of the ideas that I source from yoga mythology are from this book, Myths of the Asanas, which is green. This is from my mentor and one of my yoga heroes, Alana Kaivalya, and I'm a mentor for her students in her program. A wonderful book to grab. All the Celtic stuff, I mostly just looked at YouTube. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so let's start in a comfortable seat. You might sit in Sukhasana easy pose. And because today we're invoking a special elixir to bring us into our class, you might take a little sip of that elixir and place it at the top of your altar. Bring your hands face up to the center of your legs, close your eyes, and start breathing deeply into that bowl that you've made of your hands. You might imagine it's a bowl full of water or tea or the innards of animals as the Druids used. And you might imagine this bowl will help you to see the truth see the future, to see the past. In Sanskrit, the word for sage is sadhu. It refers to one who pursues and understands ultimate truth, which is sat. Sages have compiled yogic literature, which mostly narrates the lives and teachings of other sages. 
the stereotype of Assad who is an old half-naked man with matted hair who roams the Himalayas. In actuality, a sage comes in many guises. He may be a child, a beggar, or a king. Regardless of his or her physical appearance, the sage always has the same attributes, egalitarian vision, loving kindness, freedom from hatred, greed, and delusions, and a detachment from material objects. Sages in Sanskrit come into our yoga poses. There's many poses named after sages, and we'll explore them today. As you inhale, raise the arms up over the head, look up, exhale, bend one elbow and lean to one side. Inhale, raise the arms up, look up, exhale, bend the other elbow, lean to one side. Inhale, raise the arms, look up, exhale, twist, hand to the thigh, look over one shoulder and hold here for a moment, pulling belly up and in. In Celtic tradition, the Druids act much as sages do. While they're most notably known as men, some of the most famous, Dru famous Druids were actually women. And in my own experience with Druids in Ireland, they were all women. Inhale, raise the arms up. Exhale, go to the other side. Just as sages were called upon to advise kings in times of war, but not actually partake in the war itself, so were druids called upon by Celtic kings to advise on how to undertake difficult situations. It was believed that druids, by reading the stars and reading ancient texts and reading from each other's works, could advise on the best course of action. And while they were fierce and given to human sacrifice, they never partook in the political wars themselves. Inhale, raise the arms up. Exhale, bring the hands down. Switch which foot is in front and we will explore that flow with our fear. So reach down, grab your magical elixir. Inhale, raise the arms up, holding the beer, practice turning it to the sky. As you exhale, keep it over the head and lean to one side. Inhale, arm up. Exhale, keep it over the head, lean to the other side. Don't spill it. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, keep it in the back hand. Twist and bring it behind you, barely tapping it to the ground. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, twist and tap behind you, barely touching it to the ground. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, beer to the lips. Take a small sip and set it down. One other thing about sages and druids is they both had their ancient chants. If you're listening to the playlist, you might hear it. One chant that we do often in yoga is Om Shanti. Shanti meaning peace. In Ireland, after we take a sip, we say Slancha. Slancha meaning something like cheers. Inhale, raise the arms up and bring them to the heart center, Namaste Mudra. Before we begin class, we will chant Om Slancha. Slancha, slancha, just as we chant Om Shanti. Inhale deeply. Om slancha, slancha, slancha. Don't worry, we'll get to do that again. Bring the hands forward and roll over the knees or flip them to the side. Hands underneath the shoulders, knees underneath the hips. Inhale, lift the chest for cow pose. Exhale, pull the abs in for cat. 
Keep going through your cat and cow, inhaling and exhaling. So the poses that we're going to take today, named after the sages, are Vashistasana, Ashtavrakasana, and Kundiasana. And because the sages and the druids are considered the most intelligent and intellectual folks of all in society, it's no surprise that these poses are quite difficult. Now flip your toes, raise your bum up, come through downward dog, and wiggle it out. I remind you in this drinking yoga class, just like any other class, you are welcome to take it at your own pace. And today you have the added excuse of just needing a sip of water instead of taking the more difficult pose. Druids and sages were able to recognize the limitations of society. And so in class today, you're welcome to recognize your own limitations or disease and just ignore whatever's going on. Send both feet back, find your plank pose and hold. Roll the shoulders away from the ears and spread out those fingers. Hold the abs in, slide the shoulders down, look forward just a bit. Give me three breaths, two breaths, and then come to the knees. Let's find toes pose and sit back onto the feet. So all of these poses today do require us to be on our wrists and inversions. So before we go deeper, take both hands forward and then flip them over and pull on each finger one at a time to wake up the wrists. Good. Oh, that one cracked. And then switch sides, one finger at a time. Good. To wake up the wrists. And then pull the finger back. And then take both hands, bring the thumbs to the palm, wrap the fingers around the thumb, and then drop the fingers down so that it's like you're kind of turning on a motorcycle. Roll the hands around and the other way. And then and now bring both hands down to the ground. Okay, let's find our balance for the first time today. Inhale, right arm and left leg reach. Exhale, elbow to knee, tuck. Inhale, right and left. Exhale, elbow to knee, tuck. Inhale, right and left. Exhale, elbow to knee, tuck. Send everything out. Point the toe to the sky. Bring the hand to the inside of the foot. Kick, kick, kick into it, opening your shoulder, looking up over the right shoulder, squeezing the booty, another breath, and then send everything out. Bring the right hand down, flip the right toes, raise up into a single leg down dog, bend your left knee and draw big circles. Both the Druids and the Sages believed that we are not mere mortals but they believed in something like reincarnation, that when we die, our soul goes into something or someone else. Take the left leg up, bring it between the hands, raise the right heel up, inhale, lift into crescent lunge pose. Both druids and sages tasked themselves with getting past the idea that this life is finite. They were most connected to the heavens. And yet they also saw mother nature. They weren't priests. They were something even more all inclusive than that. Exhale, both hands come down. Inhale, raise the left arm up. In fact, druids in particular often served as judges. It was only them who could, who could judge the right and the wrong, the living and the dead. Bring both hands down. Send the left foot to the right foot. Find your plank pose. Lower knees, chest and chin down to the ground. Lift the chest up, roll the shoulders back and pause. I will warn you, when you're doing drinking yoga, sometimes postures on your belly can make you feel a little bit um, icky. So we'll avoid them. And you might even avoid them even more if you need to. Flex your feet, bring your bum to your heels extended puppy pose, and then flip the toes, raise the bum up, downward facing dog pose. Take a breath here, and lower the knees down. Separate the feet, and we go to the other side. Inhale, left arm and right leg go long. Exhale, pull, elbow to knee. Inhale, reach along. Exhale, pull, elbow to knee. 
Inhale, reach long. Exhale, pull elbow to knee. Inhale, reach long. Exhale, grab for the big toe. Kick the toe into the hand to open the chest. Rolling shoulder blades back, relaxing neck, and then looking up. The circle of life. One more breath. Lay the left hand down, clip the left toe, raise up into a three-legged down dog, bend your right knee, and roll that knee out. Keep it rolling. So, in yoga, sages often say something as if, they say that they have a saying, sorry, act as if everything you do make a world, makes a world of difference while knowing that everything you do makes no difference at all. Raise the right leg up, set it down to the right thumb, keep the left heel lifted and raise all the way up. Both sages and druids constantly wondered how impactful our actions are in the world. Whether or not our actions now have immediate effect and whether or not we control that effect how that leads to the space of our soul in the underworld or in the future or in its next incarnation. They were constantly exploring how little power humans actually had. And only when they let go of the idea that we were all powerful or in somehow in control of our fate, only then did they become advisors and spiritualists and judges. They had to let go of the idea of human power. Bring both hands down to the ground, raise the right arm up and twist. And yet they recognized that leading a truthful life meant leading without knowledge or care, I should say, of the effect. So continue to act as if everything you do makes a difference knowing it makes no difference at all. It's about the process, not the outcome. Bring both hands down, set the right foot to the left foot, use your knees again, or skip the knees, lower all the way down to the ground, flip the toes, raise into a higher cobra if your back feels good, and then lower back down. Flip the feet, push through plank, downward facing dog pose. Take a breath, good. And now bring the knees down to the ground and let's find our beer. Take beer into right hand. Inhale, right arm and left leg go long. Exhale, elbow to knee, beer below belly. Inhale, right arm and left leg go long. Exhale, elbow to knee, beer below belly. Inhale, right arm and left leg go long. Exhale, elbow to knee. Inhale, kick left leg back, beer goes forward. Exhale, take a sip. I mean, I guess you can't exhale when you take a sip, but you got what I mean. And lower all the way down. Let's find Vashistasana. So right foot kicks back, right hand goes to the ground, left hand raises up and hold. Vashistasana was asked to help King Ram. King Ram was a young king. He was actually a prince at this time. He had gone traveling. He went on vacation. He learned all about other people he had never met before. And he came back extremely disillusioned. He was like totally depressed after his vacation. Bring both hands and knee back down to the ground and let's switch sides. Left arm and right leg go long, holding onto the beer. Exhale, left elbow to right knee. Inhale, extend. Exhale, left elbow to right knee. Inhale, extend. Exhale, left elbow to right knee. Inhale, send it long, pause, take a sip. Mm. Magical elixir, set it down. Vashi Stasana, side plank pose to the left. Left foot kicks back. So, Ram's dad, the king at the time, asked the sage, Vashi Stasa, to come and perk Ram up, to give him some magical elixir or something that'll get him out of the depression. 
And Vashisthasa actually came to Ram and said, I am so happy you're so disillusioned and depressed. You see, it's only when we hit rock bottom, when we see the truth of humanity, and when we start questioning our own state and space of being, that we can actually discover truth and spirituality. So in fact, while this feels uncomfortable, it's being uncomfortable that's the most important part of your journey. Bring both hands down to the ground and both feet down. Raise the bum up, downward facing dog. Bend the knees, look forward, and make your way to the top of your space. Excellent. Once you get there, feet about one fist width distance apart. As you inhale, sit through chair pose and hold. Yes, Vashistasa recognized what all sages, druids, and pretty much smart people get. It's that you have to be uncomfortable and challenged if you want to see the truth and if you want to become your very best self. Bring your hands to your heart and twist right to left leg. So we're in twisted chair pose. We're looking over our back shoulder. Even though the feet are apart, the knees are squeezing energetically together. Yes, sages, druids, understand that it's only those of us who question, seek, and do so lovingly. It's only those of us who know about the real meaning of life. Mm -hmm. The magical elixirs just help. Come through center and twist, other side. Check your knees and check your toes. Make sure the head to the tailbone is a long line. Are your legs getting fiery? Are they getting hot? That must have felt like when you were going to the human sacrifice of a druid clan, right? Remember, remember the fire placed on our forebears. And inhale, raise the arms up, stand up, exhale, tadasana. Okay, let's go into a version of Sun Sale. Most of us have done it, classic, the Shivananda Vedanta flow. Inhale, raise the arms up, lean back, Exhale, hands through heart, forward fold. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, bend the knees, step the right leg back. Your right knee could be up or down. I'm gonna go down. Inhale, raise the arms up, lean back. Exhale, hands come down. Inhale, step left foot to right foot. Exhale, maybe Chaturanga Dandasana with the hover. Up dog, if you did the hover. Downward facing dog. Now bend the knees. Excuse me, don't do that. Raise your right leg up. The elixir's already gone to me. Raise your right leg up. Send the right leg between the thumbs. You might have to scoot it up and move it. That's fine. Look forward. Raise your left leg up. Going into standing splits. And then bring both feet down, maybe touching each other. Inhale, sit through chair pose. Raise the arms up. A little bit of struggle does the body good. Exhale, hands by our sides. Again, inhale, raise arms up, lean back. Exhale, reach hands forward, forward fold. Inhale, half lift, flat back. Exhale, plant the hands, send the left leg back, left knee softly down, right knee above right ankle. Inhale, raise arms up, lean back. Exhale, both hands come down. Inhale, right foot to left foot, plank pose. Exhale, bend the elbows, lower hover. Inhale, send chest through. Exhale, roll over, downward facing dog. Inhale, left leg lifts. Exhale, left foot to left thumb, low lunge. Inhale, right leg lifts. Ask questions, turn it over. Exhale, both feet come down. Inhale, bend the knees, raise the arms up, Utkatasana chair pose. Exhale, hands by our sides. Shall we bring our beer into it? The druids and sages would say yes. Ask questions. Inhale, raise the arms up. Exhale, fold. Grab onto that beer. Bend your knees. So, remember, we have our cup. We have our elixir. If we spill the cup, the elixir spills. No one wants to spill the elixir. So, think about it. Inhale, raise arms up. No back bend necessary, but maybe look up. 
Exhale, slide it through heart, forward fold. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, bend the knees. I recommend knees staying up now. Step back. Inhale, raise arms up, slash elixir. Exhale, set it down just in front of the left toe. Bring both hands to the sides, send the left foot back, challenge, lower down, just touch boobies to cup, and then up and through. Yes, I said boobies, Larry. And then roll over, downward facing dog. Inhale, right leg raises up. Exhale, right foot steps through. Bring elixir slightly forward, set it in front of your body. Now, challenge, both hands on elixir, raise left leg up, finding a very light standing split. And then bend your knees, bring them together. Hi, Svenya, Utkatasana, chair pose, arms raise all the way up. Exhale, hands to lips. Inhale, arms lift up, look up. Exhale, hands through heart, forward fold. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, bend the knees, slide left leg back, holding onto cup. Inhale, raise arms up, coming through crescent lunge. Exhale, cup lands just like inside or in front of right toe. Frame cup with hands, chest comes forward, lower down, tap it, up and through, roll over, downward facing dog. Bring left foot up to sky, the heavens. Send it to the left hand. Grab cup, move it forward, raise the right leg up, standing splits, how light can you be? And then bend both knees, both feet come down. Inhale, raise the arms up, come through chair pose. Exhale, do the lifts. And forward fold. Excellent. Let's get a little bit into our hips, shall we? Bend the knees, send the right foot back. Right heel turns down for warrior one. Inhale, raise arms up. We take a few breaths here, just calming down, bringing both hips to the front, pulling the rib cage in, arms high, good. And now over to the right, warrior two, Virabhadrasana. Reverse it, left arm up overhead, hold here for a moment. Tuck the tailbone under, good. Breathe into this. And then left hand comes down inside left leg, right arm up for side angle pose. Looking up towards the sky, rolling shoulder blade back. Good, another couple breaths. Hmm. One fun fact I found in my research is that many scholars believe that Hindu Brahmin and Celtic Druids come from the same Indo-European priesthood. Fun fact, push through the left leg, lean back, reverse triangle, B. And then exhale, left hand comes down, right hand comes up, triangle pose, hold here. Look up and to the right, squeeze the shoulders, roll the chest open. Another couple breaths. Left hand could also go to outside of left ankle. We're gonna play with that. Just think about it, think about it. Inhale, raise all the way up. Bend left knee, warrior two. Exhale, circle sweep to the low lunge. Now earlier, Vashi Stasana was on our knee. Maybe it is, maybe it's not. Send left foot up onto right foot or right knee is down. Look up toward the left. The sage that said, your depression is a sign of your intelligence. And bring both hands down. Maybe lift up the left foot for Agapada Chaturanga. Chest comes forward and through. We roll over, downward dog. Okay, we're going into Malasana Frog Pose. You can step or float your feet outside your hands. Maybe you're a little bit buzzed, so what the heck? Try to float. Hands up. So some of us might have a a big froggy, some of us might have a little froggy, wherever a froggy is, it's totally fine. Now, all of our other poses, all of our other sage poses today, um, Ostavarkasana, 
the sage whose body was bent into eight places, and Kundiyasana, the sage who foretold that Siddhartha would become a spiritual um, rather than a royal king. That guy is important. They're all based on our crow pose. So both hands come down to the ground in line with the shoulders, raise the bum up, and then turn the feet to face the ankles. The goal is for the armpits and the knees to connect. Have your elixir somewhere just in front of your body, bend your elbows, look toward your elixir, raise your heels up, and then raise your toes. Just keep trying. So one story that Vashistasa told Prince Ram a lot of times was about the crow and the coconut. And the story goes like this. If a crow lights upon a coconut tree and a coconut then falls to the ground, was that because the crow lighted upon the tree? Was his momentum the reason the coconut fell? Or was it just the coconut's time to go? Bring both feet down, inhale, raise the arms up, stand up, exhale, hands to the heart. The idea behind that story goes along with the idea that we cannot worry about the effect of our actions. We cannot control it. We just must choose good and true actions. Inhale, raise the arms up. Exhale, hands through heart, forward fold. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, bend the knees, step the left foot back for warrior one, toe ball, heel land. Raise arms up and hold it here. Vashistasa and Ram decided the thing to do was to try to positively affect as many coconuts as possible so that whether the coconut falls, whether it stays, no matter what, your momentum would help the coconut to maybe fall in the right way, right? At least you know you didn't negatively impact that coconut if that was the effect. I also take it as a great reason to have chosen this coconut porter for today's class. Inhale, open to the side, warrior two. Take a couple breaths here, shoulders roll back and down, so relaxed. Next inhale, breath, reverse it. Right arm overhead, well here, look at left toes, make sure they're a little bit pointed inward. Sink through hips, pull abs in, rib cage back. Good. Another couple breaths, just like a druid, reach for the past and the present and the future with equal amounts. And then bring right arm down and side right leg for side angle pose. Look up if that feels good or relax the neck. The most challenging version of this pose is fingertips off the ground. And I say, what the heck? Why not go for that? Another couple breaths. Oh, yeah. Maybe the beard makes you feel a little bit more flexible. I don't know. Just saying, push through the right leg. Lean back, reach back. How many coconuts can you touch? And then reach the right arm forward and down over the right leg, left arm up to the sky, squeeze the glutes under, look up towards the left thumb. Beautiful. So triangle pose, right hand inside is tradition, right hand outside is um, if you're feeling jazzy. <laughs> Another couple breaths. Mmm, nothing like drinking at 11 a.m. Pacific time. Inhale, come all the way up, bending right knee, warrior two. Exhale, circle sweep hands down to our low lunge. Vashistasana on the left leg, maybe that knee stays up. Ta-da! Good, look up. My experience with druids involves a lot of holding of flames, torches. I imagine holding the torch right here, leading us to the ancient Celtic mounds where human sacrifice occurred. Don't worry, there's as much death and fire and brimstone in Hindu mythology as there is Celtic mythology. It's kind of a, a theme in humanity. Bring both hands down, maybe right leg stays up. Ekapada Chaturanga Dandasana, 
forehead to cup. Stay with me. Ready? Elbows bend, knees come into armpits, raise toes off, and then bring your nose down just to the cup. Smell that sweet elixir. Three, two, both feet land. Grab onto your cup. We flow with it. Inhale, lift the arms up, look up, Exhale, hands through heart, forward fold. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, bend the knees, send the right foot back for warrior one, toe ball heel lands. Inhale, raise arms up into warrior one. Cup and left hand, open to warrior two. Turning cup in hand, left arm raises up. Placing elbow on thigh, cup up, right arm overhead. Side angle pose, straightening left leg, raising cup up, triangle, and then bring cup maybe down to the ground outside left ankle. Ooh, elixir supported triangle pose. Okay, we have a balance. We have a balance. We've worked on our side plank, so we can do this. Come all the way up again, holding beer in left hand. Bend left knee, look forward of left toe, set the cup down, raise right leg up, half moon pose. Yes, druids and sages both studied astronomy for the answer to life's most difficult questions. Like porter or stout? I know, such a difficult question. Wine, rosé or red? I mean, so many questions. Good. Now bend your left knee, softly lay on the right foot. One more time, reverse triangle, left hand rises, and then set the cup down inside the left leg. Bring the right hand down and lift the right heel up. Cup might still be in left hand for a side plank pose. Lift cup up. If you do that without spilling, you are totally druid slash sage material and bring it down. Good. Again, trying to get chest to cup, up and through, roll over, downward facing dog. Bend knees, look forward, step or flow outside the cup, and relax. So we are ready for our first um, twist, which is our, for our next stage, Kundiyasana. So if you're here, you might Take whatever comfortable position you'd like, wiggle out the wrists. So Kundiyasana is side crow with our legs so far away. So earlier today, we did chair pose, twisted. Remember that? So we were in chair pose and our elbow was to one leg. We're doing the same thing in crow. We are, we're doing it. We feel good, we're doing it. So to start, bring both feet together like you're going into chair pose and then take your hands like you're going to go through chaturanga and bring them to the side what i mean by that is hands are about shoulder distance apart they're flat on the ground you can raise your heels up to get there if you'd like and get in a sort of a crouch position and when we bend our elbows they go straight backward just like chaturanga from there lift your bum up bend your elbows you must be brave Druids and sages were often banned from um, their, their, their temples, their kings, because of their ideas. Be brave. Let your bomb go into the air, bend both elbows, raise your feet up, side crow pose. Now from there, send your right leg or your top leg back behind you, point your left leg, get towards the elixir with your nose. Three breaths, two breaths, we got this. Bend the knees and come through center. Good. Stay up here a little bit. If that was like crazy, I think we just maybe need to take a sip. Okay. Okay. So let's try for the other side. Again, I like to interlace my fingers in between. 
wiggle those wrists. Remember what Prince Ram learned. It's only when we get uncomfortable that we can become all knowing. We got this. So heels up, hands go to one side. I'm gonna show you from the front this time. So my hands are basically as far as my shoulders. When my elbows bend, they go straight back. I raise my booty up like crow pose, bend my elbows, let my bum just fall to the center and find that pendulum space where I feel balanced. Once I'm there, I extend my leg behind me from the top and in front of me from the bottom. And I breathe for three breaths. For two, whoa, 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 and die. Everyone, come to some comfortable position and take a couple breaths. Beautiful. Part of seeing everything is seeing the chaos and breathing through it, right? Land the hands, bend the knees, and then straighten them up. Grab onto that beer slash elixir. We go to the other side. Inhale, raise the arms up to the sky. Look up. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, bend the knees, step left foot back for warrior one, toe ball, heel lands. Raise arms up, look up, hand holds, right hand holds, drink. Warrior two, reverse, warrior two, and then propping elbow, side angle pose, maybe arm overhead. Straightening right leg, reverse triangle, and then right hand comes down, cup lands outside right ankle for full triangle pose, and then come all the way up, bend right knee, half moon, half moon, look over the right toe, land the cup underneath the right hand, try not to push too hard on it, especially if it is a solo cup, and then raise the left arm up, be the half moon. Half moon representing feminine energy, the female druids, and I suspect the female sages. All of our sages in today's class are men, but there's a lot of asanas. I have a feeling there's a female sage asana somewhere in the mix. Another breath. Bend right knee, set left foot back. Raise up, coming through, straight leg, triangle pose in reverse. And then maybe keep the uh, glass in your hand. Bring the left hand down and go into side plank. Wow, that was like Cirque du Soleil. Like Cirque du Soleil. Right arm up to the sky. Very functional fitness this is today. Another breath. And then set that right cup down. And then bring both feet down. Here you go, roll through it, lift up, roll over, downward facing dog. Bend the knees, look forward, step or flow outside the elixir. Bring it to your lips, take a sip. And then bring your hands back behind you, fingers face your bum for altar pose. Lift the hips up high. Druids were known for their sacrifices. But in this modern era, we might imagine that on our altar, we take, we place something that we want to let go of. According to the sages, Jiva Mukti, or soul freedom, is when we recognize that we can both be content with the present moment while letting go of things that do not serve our spiritual needs. So we let go of things in the present that do not feed our spirit to achieve spirit liberation, to achieve contentment. Sit all the way down. Excellent. Find butterfly pose. Good. Okay. So we got to get into the most difficult pose of today. The true sage pose. Ashta Brakasana, named after the sage, sage Asta, Asta Vakra. I struggle with these words, even when I'm not drinking beer. So 
the stage was bent in eight places and he is famous because he was judged for being disabled and then he showed up like everybody in the whole kingdom by being the best yogi and the smartest. So there, then the elbows go all the way down and then lift all the way up. Okay, so you might take a sip. We're gonna be doing some weird stuff for a little while. Don't worry, there's corpse pose. There has to be corpse pose in this class because like of all the human sacrifice. So send both feet long in front of you. Inhale, raise the arms up. Exhale, fold over the feet. Inhale, lift the chest. Exhale, bow. Forehead to the knees. Take deep, deep breaths here. Good. We are going to stand up one more time. It all makes sense. It all makes sense. And then lift the chest up. Cross right leg over left leg. Pull the knee in close. Look over your back shoulder. Marichia Asana of this pose. Uh, I think Marichia Asana was a scholar, not a sage. Anyway, he was the one that figured out past, present, and future are all one. Come through center, switch sides. All right. Pull the knee in, lift the chest, and look back. Mm. So right now we're loosening up the hips a lot, a lot, a lot. Okay. So bring your hands down beside your booty. We're going to actually, sorry, bring our hands forward. Pull our knees into our chest and cross our toes, strengthen our abs. This is old school ashtanga. It'll help for later. So hands forward, lean a little bit forward, bend your knees, bring them into your chest, and then lift your bum up. Hold it for three. Or two. Oh, thank gosh, I'm drinking beer right now. That was so hard. Switch other foot on top. Wiggle the wrists. Hands slightly in front of booty. Lean forward, knees to chest, pull belly in, lift bum, three, two, one. Good, now keep the feet crossed, come on up, grab onto that beer, and then, so you have a crossed foot, take the beer in the opposite hand, grab your crossed foot, and as you exhale, stand up, pulling your crossed foot into your hip. So we're going to tree pose. I'll tell you the, the story behind it. But first, your tree might be on your ankle. It might be on your thigh, not your knee. But if you can bring it all the way up to your hip, we'll do something quite awesome. Whoa. So in yoga mythology and druid mythology, there are trees. The cool part about druid mythology is the tree is the god um, Danu who is, or Don, Don is the god, Don who is his wife, he actually becomes an oak tree. And so in Celtic mythology, oak trees are considered very special. Hindu mythology is the Banyan tree or the trees um, that like Buddha sat under, and Shiva, whatever. Anyway, take your, take your cup and put it onto your foot. Oh, I don't know if I can do it with this one. Yeah, keep trying, keep trying, keep trying. You'll find a spot. There it is. Hold for three, two, and one. Now, if that isn't focus, I don't know what it is. Who got it? Who got it? Who got it? Good. As you exhale, roll all the way down. Take a stretch here. Good. And then flip. The great part of this is we have two sides. We have two sides. So if you didn't get on one side, you might be able to get on the other. And of course, if you don't have the foot all the way to your thigh, you just do normal tree pose and just drink your elixir. It's fine. So if you want to try on this side, again, take cup to opposite hand as top leg. Grab top leg with your hand all the way into the other leg. Stand up and bring the foot as high into your hip as you can. In fact, the higher the foot, the better. Once there, try to land your cup. And we take a few breaths. There we go. Look at a drishti, a point of focus. 
Keep breathing. Whoa. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Druids and sages were not afraid. Three, two, and grab that cup. Everyone set the foot down. Take a step. And exhale. Bow. Yes. Whoa. Whoa. Amazing stuff here. Okay. So raise your heels up. Bend your knees. Cosmic egg slash fish pose. Egg pose. Cosmic egg pose. And then sit down. Okay. So send your left leg forward. Take your right leg. Hold it in tight to your chest. So Ashta Vrkasana basically gives us a cross-legged bind in crow pose. And our legs are going straight to the side. This is a super fun one to try. I don't even know if I'll get it today, but I've been drinking a lot of elixir, so I feel like the possibilities are endless at this point, which we are druids and sages know that's true. So we'll take the leg all the way up to our shoulder and try to lift it. A lot of us know about wheel pose, where we go like this, clock pose, excuse me, clock pose. It's kind of like that. We're kind of going that way. So we take the foot up to our shoulder and then we lean away from it. So I've got my right leg up, I lean away from it. I, I'm gonna hold it, but I don't need to. In fact, I will actually drop it and hold it close. I take my left leg up and I try to bring it over my right ankle. This is all. So the beginning, just try to get right knee up to shoulder, left leg over right ankle. If you are here, then you bring your hands forward as if you're going to go to crow pose. You lift your butt up like our, our um, ab work from earlier. You send your legs out to the side and the elbows down. You're literally squeezing your bicep with your arm. So one more time, I'll show you from the front. Good. So right leg up, left ankle over top of right. Squeeze both knees to right shoulder. Bring hands forward, lift butt up. Send legs out to side. Three breaths. Two breaths. Oh! If that doesn't make me a sage, I don't know what will. Everyone, relax. Take a sip. Mm -hmm. Yes? Um, slantra. Slantra. Launch aha. Okay. Right leg forward. Left hand inside left knee. Hold the knee up. I should have warned you guys, this is a bit of an advanced class. More advanced than most drinking classes. But the sages are crazy. Sages and druids. Blame it on the Irish. Everything can be blamed on the Irish, let's be honest. Okay, wiggle the hips. Now you might just stay here. Another fun thing to do if you're in the mood is that clock pose where you take your hand to the opposite, your outside hand, outside the foot, kick it up through the hand, stick your head through, it's like a leprechaun with his head in the pot. Or we go for our full version of the pose. I'll face you for this. So I take my hand, I kind of hold my leg there, or I can even prop my leg up. That's kind of like a cheat, but it helps. Bend the other leg, whoa, cross it over the ankle, and then both knees squeeze the shoulder. Well, please squeeze the shoulder. Then we lean forward, lift the butt up, straighten the elbows, and go to the side. Three breaths. Two breaths. Squeeze the ground with your fingers and lower down. Yes. Let's grab that beer and bring our knees in and give ourselves a hug. Head to the knees. Mm -mm -mm. And lift the head up. Okay. We've got to start getting back to Mother Earth. Our head's been in the heavens. Crazy. So take the beer and lean back for boat pose. Hands behind the hips, toes point. In both the creation stories of yoga and Celtic, or sorry, Hindu and Celtic mythology, there's great vast oceans. Boat pose represents us sailing on those spiritual oceans. Bring the hands up, beer still hold, held between the calves. Couple more breaths. And now keeping the beer between the calves, slowly roll down. Once here, lower the head down. Flex the feet, try not to squeeze that solo cup. 
Bend the legs out, holding the beer to a straight line, and then slowly bring them in, keeping back on ground. Exhale, legs out, holding the beer to a straight line. Inhale, slowly back in. Exhale, legs out, holding beer to straight line. Inhale, slowly back in. Now as you exhale, reach your hands past your legs, sit all the way up, try not to spill that beer, and your reward, grab it, take a sip. Beer and toes lower together, beer and toes, beer and toes, beer and toes, beer and toes, slowly roll back, beer to the sky, and then all the way up over your head, making sure it doesn't spill until it comes over the back of the head. Once there, set it up nice and carefully. Wow, wow. Take hands down underneath your booty with thumbs facing each other. So wiggle your shoulders together, wiggle your thumbs together, point your toes. As you exhale, bend your elbows, lift your chest up, squeeze your elbows close, and bring the top of your head to the ground for fish pose. The original scholar, the original animal referenced in all of yoga, the original yogi student, the fish. And now bring your head back down, release your shoulders, hold one knee into your chest or your armpits, squeeze it tight, tight, tight. And then, <clears throat> excuse me, bring it across your body. So right knee to the left, look to your right. And now come through center, squeeze that right knee in. Switch to the left knee, send the right leg long, pull the left knee into your armpit, and then pull it to the right, left arm opens to the sky, unwind the hips, allow the chest to relax. And then bring both, well, bring the left knee into your chest and then bring the right knee into your chest and then take that beer out from, whoa, over your head, be careful. Raise both feet up to the sky, point and flex the feet, sending all of your energy down to your body, hands lightly on the elixir, just feeling it. Bend the knees, set the feet down, Take the beer up to the sky and then give me one bridge pose. As you exhale, bring your hips up to the elixir, place it on your belly button or your hips and hold three bridge pose. Big two bendasana and slowly lower down. Once the glutes are to the ground, tuck your chin once, take a final sip here. Set the beer down, lower the head down, let the feet go long, palms face up, Shavasana, corpse pose, druids and sages recognized that our death just is another opportunity for our spirit to find new expression. Druids and sages saw our souls as never ending, connected to the earth, connected to the stars, connected to each other, connected to elixirs and prophecies and water and wind. So as you lay here, feeling strong, feeling challenged, feeling truth, feeling magic. Allow all of the thoughts to slide away and allow the depths 
of your own mythology to shine through. I'll let you know when it's time to come back. I'm still here. You can go a little bit deeper. Lay there for a moment longer while I explain. Sadhu, or sage, can also be traced to the Sanskrit word sat, which means to reach one's goals. The same root also appears in the word sadhana, which means conscious spiritual practice. A sadhu is someone who has gained perfection in sadhana. Sadhana is indispensable for reaching the main goal of yoga, which can be described as enlightenment or self-realization. I remember the night that I spent with druids in Ireland. I definitely realized something of myself that night. Inhale to raise your arms up over your head. Exhale to bend your knees. Roll onto one side, resting your head on one arm. And take a moment to set an intention how you bring what we learned here today with you into the world, the underworld, the overworld, whatever world. And now press up to a seat, grab what's left of your elixir, it over your head and then to your lips. Take a sip. Together we chant Om Slancha. Inhale. Om Slancha. Slancha. Slancha Namaste.
thank you all so much for joining me. I, I have a little bit left. It wasn't the best class. I'll do better next time. Let me know what you're drinking. Let me know what you liked about class today. Feel free to stay in chat on Zoom. Thank you, Facebook, if you're doing this now or another time. I totally appreciate your coming. The next holiday is Easter, so we might have to do something for Easter, although it's coming pretty quickly. I don't know how many drinking yoga classes we can have in one month, but we'll find out. Thank you. Have a wonderful day. Take the mythology with you.